Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm back with another video. Uh, this time I'm going to be talking about this really cool experiment I found online that illustrates something called the Marangoni effect. Uh, some French researchers at the University of Paris uh, discovered this phenomenon and I think it's pretty cool, so let's take a look and uh, let's figure out what's going on. So in the video I found, researchers put a drop composed of a mixture of water, isopropyl alcohol, and food coloring on the surface of a bath of sunflower oil. The initial drop of water and alcohol, which I'll refer to as the mother droplet, strangely begins to fragment and decompose, sending fingers of smaller child droplets out from its perimeter. Over time, the unstable mother drop completely evaporates, and the entire solution forms a sea of very small, stable droplets. Why does this happen? Well, the solution lies in something called the Marangoni effect. Uh, the Marangoni effect is present whenever there is a surface tension gradient on the outer surface of a liquid or at a liquid interface. Imagine you're a water molecule on the surface of a drop of water. You're surrounded on all sides by other molecules of water, all of which are exerting an attractive force on you and all the other water molecules around them. This is what is known as surface tension. These molecular attractions cause water to resist being separated and allow bugs and other small insects to rest on top of water without sinking through it. So then what is the Marangoni effect? The Marangoni effect can be illustrated simply using some water with pepper flakes sprinkled on top and a bit of soapy solution. Soap has a lower surface tension than water, so when we put a drop of the soap solution into the water bath, the pepper flakes are more strongly pulled by the water molecules on the rim than by the soap molecules at the center, so the pepper flakes spread out. So how does this relate back to our alcohol and water droplet? Doesn't the droplet have uniform composition, so the surface tension is the same everywhere? Initially, yes, but over a short time span, some of the alcohol evaporates at the rim of the droplet, and this evaporation sets up a surface tension gradient, just like the soap droplet in water, with high surface tension at the rim and low surface tension at the center. This is a diagram of what a cross-section of the droplet looks like. Using interferometry, the researchers who discovered this phenomenon were able to determine that the droplet height was largest in the middle and decreased radially outward, reaching a minimum a short distance from the edge. This thickness profile is partially due to the surface tension of the droplet, trying to minimize droplet surface area, and partially due to the evaporation of alcohol on the outer rim. As liquid flows along the droplet surface toward the edge, small globules of liquid build up along the perimeter of the mother droplet, finger outward from the rim, and break off. I attempted to reproduce the experiment with mixed results. Initially, I was unable to reproduce the fingering phenomenon due to the fact that the concentration of alcohol I was using was too low. There was not enough alcohol along the rim of the mother droplet to drive the surface tension gradient and cause whole-scale droplet instability. Using a higher concentration of alcohol, I was successfully able to reproduce the droplet decomposition phenomenon. I was able to record values of mother droplet radius as a function of time for several values of alcohol concentration. Plotting radius versus time, we can see that larger concentrations of alcohol cause droplets to increase in size, with maximum radius growing approximately linearly with alcohol concentration. We can collapse this data set by dividing measurements of radii by the maximum radius and dividing time by the time it takes the droplet to completely collapse. Doing this, we see that all curves have the same essential shape, regardless of alcohol concentration. The apparent self-similarity of the spreading dynamics makes it likely that the phenomenon of droplet instability is governed by scaling laws, and the researchers who discovered this phenomenon derived a characteristic radius and time as a function of initial alcohol concentration, maximum droplet thickness, 
initial volume, effective tension, and constants of viscosity and evaporation. In this analysis, the slow evaporation of water was neglected, as well as the difference in densities between pure liquids and the mixture. Using the constants defined in the associated paper, I was able to determine that R max was about 0.28 times the characteristic radius for each mother droplet. I hope you've enjoyed this brief foray into the world of surface tension and the Marangoni effect. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.